What is up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. It's time for roster predictions, my favorite time of every other week. Uh, roster, roster update number six is coming out, and I normally start off by saying it could be a banger. I don't really think it could be a banger, okay? I'm still excited for it. Any roster update, I'm, I'm definitely into, but it's not gonna be a banger this week okay and I, I i know you know i shouldn't be bringing everything down at the very beginning i just level setting expectations we got 10 diamonds last time there's no possible chance of that okay so we got that on the table that doesn't mean that it's not going to be good that doesn't mean that we can't make a ton of stubs and that doesn't mean that we can't get super prepared for team affinity number three. And that's gonna be the focus of this roster update is setting yourself up by buying guys who are gonna get big gains and, and turn their exchange value much higher than the price that you're gonna pay so that when TA3 comes out, you can do a bunch of exchanges for pennies on the dollar. Okay, so let's get into it. And we usually start commons, go all the way up to the diamonds. This is a part that you're really gonna wanna focus on here. These commons go for single digit prices and they're gonna be worth more when they go bronze in the Affinity Exchange. Not to mention a few of them with their price difference right now are actually big time flips. I spent, a, I spent a lot of today flipping a couple of these guys just because I was like, well, I wanna have a high stock of them, but when there's this kind of divide and people are fulfilling the orders, I might as well do it. So let's get started. I got 41 names for y'all, and we're gonna start here with the Giants. Uh, let me do this. Uh, let's see if we can trim this down. Let's start by going under there just to just to cut it and then I'll get into the golds and diamonds later or else I'm gonna be looking through all these names all night. Let's start with Tyro Estrada, a uh, former Yankee who's come out here to San Francisco and he's playing pretty well and I think he's due to go up to like a 66 or so. So not the biggest of the gains here that we're gonna see in the common realm, but a three point boost. You see he's going for nothing. You can go put in anything five and above. Five is the min order on a common. Not really flippable, who cares? I mean, actually he is flippable, but it would just take a lot to make a profit. But you're really stocking up a bunch of Tyro Estradas to get him into the bronze tier and then use him as an exchange. So I definitely think he's gonna go up uh, and I think he has a great chance to be somebody who hits bronze. But more importantly, I think the guy right below him here, Lamonte Wade Jr. is gonna go up even bigger. So between the two giants here, I would invest in Wade more so than I would Estrada. Uh, he's also very cheap and he's gonna go up for me to a 69. I think he's got a big boost in him. He's been incredible. Leading off for the Giants, just playing remarkably well right now. This team has been so fun to watch. I know they lost first place a little bit. I think only for like a couple hours in a given day and then they won later. Uh, the Dodgers have caught up and sorry Giants fans, you're not gonna win that division. I don't believe I'm sure this will be clipped and shipped if y'all do. And you know what? I'll tip my cap, but I'm still putting my money on the Dodgers to win the division. But I will say, I think the Giants have staying power to at least stay in the wild card all year as long as they're healthy, which is obviously a big caveat for any ball club, but especially one that is built kind of on veterans that maybe can tend to break down a little bit more. So I know they already lost Longoria. They've had a few other injuries. If they can stay mostly healthy and avoid the devastating injury, I think that they're going to do well. But guys like Lamonte Wade Jr. have come in and filled the gap when like Mike Yastrzemski went out a couple times. I think Steven Duggar's been out. Um, even Evan Longoria, in a weird way, he's kind of covering the Evan Longoria injury because then Wilmer Flores can move over to third and Wade can play first, etc., etc. Anyway, not trying to get on too much of a, a tangent about real life baseball, but Lamonte Wade Jr. got him going up to a 69, so he's a great investment. Let's go over to one of my favorite uh, new players. I, I was picking him up in all my fantasy leagues this week, and I've become a fast fan of Gavin Sheets. Now, if you don't know, he's got a uh, major league father, Larry Sheets, played back in the 80s and maybe a little bit into the 90s. So he's got that blood lineage, and he has hit the ground running with the White Sox. He was crushing it over this past week, showing a lot of power, and actually batting second when Moncada was out after a wicked slide. Moncada's back, so now Sheets is kind of batting in that 6-7 area. But this is a guy who's like really looked the part early. I understand when a guy comes up, has a fast week or two, that doesn't mean that that's who they are from the jump. He'll get figured out a little bit and then it will be on him to adjust. But one of the reasons I really like lineage players like this, and you, you see what the Jays are doing with lineage players uh, and how well that's working for them, is a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them understand the ebbs and flows of being a major leaguer and 
you know, it's anecdotal, but you look at some of the guys with lineage and they don't get down on like an 0 for 22 that everybody kind of inevitably hits at some point. Um, and, and the bottom line is he's got the talent too. You can have all the lineage in the world, but if you're not talented enough to fulfill it, it doesn't really matter. I think Sheets is. I got him going up to a 66 off rip here. And I got to be honest, He's a sneaky save for silver. I know I talked about getting these commons and exchanging them for the team affinity, but maybe that's something that you don't really care about, like you're not worried about exchanges. Um, then save him for silver, because if this power surge is real, he could be silver pretty darn quickly. And by that, I mean two updates after this one. So that would be another month or so, but that, that would be fast for somebody who just came up last week. Next up, if I told you this name, you would have said it was a fake player because it just seems like, oh, that's a generic player. Like that's not real. That's a generated player, right? No, Art Warren is a real player in the majors and shouts to Art because he's out here doing his thing and I got him getting a five point boost up to a 67. Uh, but they need relief out there in Cincinnati. That's been their biggest bugaboo this year. Nobody can seem to consistently pitch well out of the bullpen for them until Art Warren hit the scene and he's like, Pfft. This is not hard. I'm going to be out here with my four seam slider curve, two seam mix out here dominating and I deserve a five point upgrade. And then he shoved me. So that's what happened because I made fun of his name and I shouldn't have done that and I deserve to be shoved. So Art Warren, five point boost for him. Let's go over to, I believe it's the Yankees, right? He has a Mariners uniform on in his card, but Nasty Nestor over here. This was one of the, oh no, he does it. Okay. On the website, he has a Seattle uniform was he on the mariners or is that showing the right picture or or am i just thinking of somebody else more importantly am i just senile possibly but anyway i got nestor going up for a big boost he was on seattle okay because i was like i thought he was on new york forever baltimore in 18 new york in 19 seattle in 20 and then back to new york and he's having a hell of a season um in 21 innings so far 12.4 strikeouts 3.4 walks and 5.6 hits per nine. He's been out here just dominating. And I'm like, okay, okay, Nestor. I'm out. I, I, I respect it, dude. Uh, he and Jonathan Loizaga have been really, really sharp for them, uh, building the bridge to Aroldis Chapman, which he promptly burns and gives up the game. So they're like, it's not our fault, man. Usually the middle relief is shaky and you can't get to the closer. Uh, they're getting to the closer and they're like, here's this lead on a silver platter. And he's like, boom fuck your lead and gives up a grand slam. So uh, kind of rude of him, if I should say so myself, but I do have Nasty Nestor getting a, a, an upgrade up to 67. And I will point out that he was one of the ones that I was flipping all day today, slowly making a good number of stubs. You know, you're not gonna, like, I understand if you have a bankroll that's like over 30, 40 K, you don't really see the impact of a uh, of a flip like this until you do a bunch, but I promise you that if you're doing a lot of them and you can put in the time to do that, you will see the impact. If you're a smaller bankroll person, this is right up your alley. You should be doing this micro flipping. Th these micro investments are, are the key to building a big bankroll if you have a small one right now. If you're working on three, 4,000 stubs, I've had people say, I, I can't do anything in the market because of that. Yes, you can. And those folks are why I still do the commons. I like to look up the commons and bronzes because I want people of all bankroll sizes to feel like they can invest because you absolutely can. So Nasty Nestor getting a five point boost here. I got another five point boost coming from another relief pitcher who's been pretty hot this year for the Rangers. And his name is John King. And he's just been pitching very well. Um, I don't have his numbers handy or else I'd read them to you. But he is uh, gonna go up to a 68. And if they leave that stamina at 68, then I tell you what, he might start to become a little funky lefty bronze for Battle Royale because obviously the hits and the Ks are what's going to go up. He's already got some decent control. You see he's got the sinker slider meta right there staring you in the face with a 78 mile an hour changeup. I got to be honest, a bronze John King appeals to me as like my third lefty uh, in a BR bullpen. I understand that that's not going to be the reason that you win a 12-0, but I like to have as much... Uh, uh, as many trustable arms as I can deep in my bullpen because inevitably if I have a big run in a BR 
I get down to the dregs of my bullpen in some game. I end up playing like a six inning game against somebody or I play like three, four inning games in a row so everybody's taxed. So whenever I have a longer run, I need the back end guys to come forward. So John King, when he gets bronze, he should be a nice one. Now here's one of my favorites, y'all. This is one you have to be in on if you're gonna be doing the affinity exchanges because he's gonna get such a fat boost. I really think they need to give him mad love. And it's my boy, Anthony Bender. You see him at a 54 right now? I got my man's going up to a 69. I mean, that's, that's as nice as it can get. This guy is on another level. If you haven't watched him pitch, you should check him out. He's absolutely insane. Uh, in 26 and the third innings, he has 34 strikeouts. That's an 11.6 rate, 2.4 walks, 4.1 hits. And even though it doesn't really matter that much for uh, MLB The Show purposes, he hasn't allowed a homer. So they should boost the homer nine just for the fun of it, just to make sure that the card is as accurate as it can be. So like I said, I got him going up to a 69. And I'll be honest, they could trade Yimmy Garcia and make Bender the closer. He's 26. There's no reason to baby him. This is not some 22-year-old that they kind of have to work out. They found something here, and I think they've got something real. He got his first save yesterday. Yimmy's 30. Get him out of there. He allows too many homers to be a closer anyway, and get Anthony Bender in there. So I know a lot of y'all play fantasy baseball too, and if you, if you play in a league that counts saves, Go get Anthony Bender and stash him on your bench. He could be a closer for them very soon. So I got him going up 15 points, and he costs you a whopping 16 right now. Now, that'll go up probably as we speak here because my Twitch chat is, is probably placing in some orders. But even if he gets around 30, 40, even, even at the buy now of 83, that's still pretty much worth uh, what a 69 would be. In fact, let's let's see what a, what a standard 69 runs. Well, there you go. Well, actually, no, because you could put in a buy order form. So, yeah, don't pay over too much here. I would say cap it at like 50 is what I would pay for Bender at the very high end. But with that kind of upgrade coming, it's really nice. Plus, another great save for Silver. I think he has a great chance to be a summer Silver this year the way he's pitching right now. Next up, um, I did wait because they were both on the same team. Uh, next one. Oh man, where has where's this guy coming from? If you if you've been following baseball for years, you you know this guy's name. Like you've been seeing this name around. But like, Jace Peterson just going off lately. He's always been kind of that solid utility fielder um, that can be on a ball club, play anywhere, and fill in. You, to get through the grind of 162, you need Jace Peterson types on your team, and you need them to be amenable to going between AAA and the majors back and forth when they have options. I think he's probably out of options at this point. But you know, you need guys like that. And every once in a while, they spike something. And over 113 plate appearances this year, he's hitting 258, 381, 441 with three homers and four steals. So he's going to get a nice little across the board boost. I think he goes into a 69 uh, bronze here, which would be really nice for him. And he's playing very well for the Brewers right now. So there you go. And depending on where the boosts come, a guy with five, uh, what's that, five, six positions could be a decent little BR bench bat too, you know? I'm always looking out for the for the fringes in BR, trying to get those little edge gains. I will say, 816 OPS against righties, 854 against lefties. So he's balanced. It should be a nice balanced upgrade to his core four. Maybe a little speed, a bunch of stealing because he's four for four, and maybe even a little defense, although I don't know how good his defense has been this year. I will say, well, Birdie told me some defensive upgrades could be coming down the line. So we'll keep an eye out for those. Um, got a few more bronzes here. Oh, this is the, I got two more bronze to bronze and then one other common to bronze who's going to surpass them because I got two more 69s here. So let's get to these. First things first, let's talk about Andrew Vaughn, who I will just say right now is absolutely a save for silver if you are so inclined to doing so. Um, he's... He's really starting to find his groove in the majors. Uh, he's a rookie, if you're unfamiliar, and he's actually not that much of a pro. Uh, that sounds like I'm dissing him. He's not a pro, dude. He doesn't know. No, I mean, he hasn't been in pro baseball that long. Uh, he was just drafted in 2019. So he's one of the first arrivals from that class, and he's already looking like a true major leaguer. 
And if you watch him, you know, kind of regularly, which I actually do, uh, being a Detroit Tigers fan, I watch the, their games against the White Sox. And I tune into the White Sox a good bit because they have a lot of fun players to watch. So I've seen a lot of Andrew Vaughn this year, and you can tell that he's starting to get it. Now, the one issue we have right now is that he's very uneven, and uh, this platoon that he has on his card is going to maintain but he's starting to put a few things together against righties and, and find his footing there. And if that continues to click, that's what's going to make him a summer silver. For now, I got him going up to a 69. And so uh, that's where it's at with Andrew Vaughn. But this is one of the most exciting players in the league. Even though he's not getting a lot of buzz right now, I understand his, his ceiling is still sky high. And then our last, uh, not our last, but one, another bronze to bronze before we get into our last common to bronze is uh, this is a bronze to bronze here with Luis Terenz. Terenz had an interesting trajectory this year. Um, he's an interest, He's a good prospect. I'm not going to say interesting two times in a row, crutch word. Uh, but he, he is a really good prospect behind the dish who, you know, was going to get some playing time, but basically be Tom Murphy's backup playing like maybe once or twice a week. But they didn't really want to do that with a rookie. And then all of a sudden Tom Murphy's like, well, how, what if I hit 192? Then I could give away some of my playing time. Wouldn't that be so cool? And uh, Terenz said, yeah, that'd be dope. Let me have that playing time. And listen, Terenz himself is only hitting 209, so it's not like he's taken... Oh, Husik just pulled a Mike Trout. Nice. Um, it's not like he's turned around and said, I'm much, much better than you, but his power has really taken off. He has nine homers on the year, a bunch of them since the last update. So we're going to see a nice big power boost for him. I got him going up to a 69, just a little two-point boost for Terenz. But uh, if he can kind of do a little bit more than the all-or-nothing power stroke right now, then maybe even he could attack Silver this year too. So we'll keep a close eye on Terenz. Now, our last common to bronze was somebody I hinted at if you've been in my stream before we started this, and it is Zach Thompson. I got him going up for a massive boost, eight points up to a 70. Um, this guy, man, listen, they just got some bad news that Sixto is going to be out for the year. He's already been out all of this year, but it's officially done done. He's going to have shoulder surgery, so there's no no dice on him this year. And if you had told me, or, or like a Marlins fan, hey, no Sixto at all this year, I'm sorry, and I got nothing for you there. And and still said that they were going to have an excellent rotation. People would have been like, okay, well, there's Pablo Lopez and Sandy Alcantara, and some people are talking about this Trevor Rogers guy because he wasn't he wasn't a known commodity coming into the year. There was like some people that were in on him, but it wasn't known that he was going to put up a 2.22 ERA. People would have been like, what are you talking about? Well, then Lopez and Alcantara take a jump. Trevor Rogers becomes a god, and now Zach Thompson is filling a fourth starter's role uh, and in his first 24 innings, casually has a 225 ERA and a 1.0 whip. Now, the ERA doesn't matter for our MLB The Show purposes, right? There's no runs per nine metric here. I'm just pointing out how great he's been, but that 1.0 whip absolutely plays because that means that he's not allowing hits or walks. 6.4 hits per nine, 2.6 walks, 11 Point six strikeouts. Zach Thompson's getting a huge boost. Absolutely a save for Silver. And if I may be so bold, he's got gold potential this summer. I'm just saying. I mean, we're talking like August, even September type of deal. But the way he's pitching, the kind of stuff that he has, I would not rule it out. So I will tell you that, that when he gets upgraded this week, I'm not putting all 70 of these into an affinity exchange. I'm going to do some of them without a doubt, but not all of them because I'm keeping a little stockpile just to see silver. And then even when even if and when he hits silver, going to save some for gold. Because I, I, it's fun to be like, hey, I bought some of this gold player when he was nine stubs which is what i bought most of my zach thompson's at so zach thompson getting a big boost here got a few other just small little bronze to bronze updates for some guys but they can be uh they can be useful let's talk about my tigers briefly here and Tariq Skubal getting a boost. You see he's he's free, or you know base price, I should say, not free. Uh, but he's 25 if you put in the buy orders because there are no buy orders right now. And uh, I think he's going to go up to like a 74. He's going to be right on the cusp of silver there. He could get it. Obviously, one caveat, anytime I put somebody at a 74 or a, uh, or a, a 79 or an 84, that obviously means that they're right there. So, you know, if you even believe in them at all, 
then you should be in because there's a chance that I'm wrong to the benefit, meaning I'm wrong and they actually go silver with him. So Tariq Skubal is somebody that you should probably be in on if you believe in him because if I'm wrong and he goes silver, well, then that's great. But even if not, if he goes to 74, then people will start to invest in him anyway, so he'll be more expensive. But he's been a strikeout machine. Uh, you talk about somebody who's found their footing. At the beginning of the year, he really was getting knocked around. I mean, the Tigers went 8-19 and in April and earned every bit of it. And Scooble was a part of that. He had a 6-14 ERA. And again, ERA is not a, something that we measure on the card, but it just lets you know how much he was struggling. And since then, he has a 371. But more importantly, for our purposes, he has the skills to back it up, including a 12.2 K9 since May 1st. Uh, his, his walk rate is at 3.4, which is fine. I think it can move up a few points, but it's not going to surge. And then the hit rate being at 8.2 is probably fine where it's at. And that's the main reason that I don't have him at silver yet because he's going to get a giant strikeout boost, but that's probably it. And, and I think that's that's where it needs to be with him. And he needs to prove it a little bit more. Maybe bring down the walk rate, bring down the hit rate a little bit, and then go to silver. But we'll take the three-point boost, especially since he costs just 25 stubs right now. Sticking with the Tigers, best team in the league, we will talk about... Whoop, nope, we will not do that. We will talk about Eric Haas. This guy's been a real fun treat. You see here, he's 27. He was not some prospect of any note. He just kind of came up and said... Hey, I'm Eric Haas and I'm awesome for some reason. And we're like, no, you're not. And he's like, no, for real, I am, watch. And he hit it inside the park home run. And then he shoved me, what a dick. Um, I shouldn't have said that he was bad. 11 homers in 147 plate appearances. Now he does have a sub 300 OBP, so Tigers fans, which I include myself, let's a bucket of cold water over us. We need to chill. But the power is undeniable. 547 slug is incredible. He has a 299 ISO. That's your slug minus your batting average. And that keys in on your extra base power. So let's see, it's 18 of his 34 hits have gone for extra bases. That's incredible. So uh, we're going to see big power boosts for Eric Haas. And thankfully, he got a Topps Now card uh, by Topps Now Company. We don't know if MLB, the show's going to put it in yet, but there's, the card is now at least out there. And if I had to bet, I'd say that they're going to give it to him. Because why not? Why wouldn't you? You know? Just look in my eyes, SDS. Why wouldn't you? Do it, please. But seriously, he's had a, a few like really special moments to where I thought he would have already had a Topps now. So when he hit the inside the park homer and another homer that day, I was like, they have to give him one. Well, I was checking out the archive on Topps now and I didn't see one. So I was in my Discord complaining like Topps now still hasn't given him a card. And one of, uh, one of the viewers in there was like, no, no, you missed it. They did give him one, but it wasn't in the archive yet. So... I, I, I didn't miss it by, by like not looking thoroughly enough. It just wasn't in the archive. But I really, really, really hope that they give us that tops now. Either way, um, I do have him going up to a 74 here. He's going to need to improve the batting average or get better against righties before he'll go silver. But I do think we get a nice boost here for Eric Haas. Another catcher who's been tearing the cover off the ball, but kind of that's it, like the home runs are all he's been doing, is Elias Diaz. And I've got him going up to a 74 as well. He's been just crushing homers left and right. Weirdly, I, I know this is going to surprise a lot of folks. It coincides with a homestand in Coors, which, hey, we don't, you know, I'm no shade on that. No shade. I'm just saying he took full advantage. Uh, five of his six homers have come at Coors this year, and he's just a completely different player. There's 756 OPS at home, 482 on the road. Yikes. Uh, but he's definitely going to get a nice boost here. If you look at what he's done since the last roster update, he has hit four of those homers in just 32 plate appearances. That's good for an 862 slug. Not OPS. You thought I was going to say OPS. That's his slug since the last roster update. He is a bit imbalanced, but it's an imbalance that reverses what we see here. He's crushing righties this year and struggling a bit against lefties. That's also why I don't think he's going to go silver, though. I think they're going to give him big love against righties, but take away a little bit of that contact against lefties to kind of keep him right there at like a 74. So that's Elias Diaz. Now let's get into some new silvers here because these, these, these can be some money makers. And these can also be our next set of golds. So always keep, keep an eye on the next silvers because, hey, 
they could keep rising. First one is a guy who I just love. I mentioned him earlier when I was talking about Nestor Cortez, and it is Johnny Lasagna. Jonathan Loizaga has just been having a wonderful year. Uh, I love that 50 stamina. I got him going up to a 75. Get him in the silver. I will constantly use him in BR. I don't care about the ERA. That's like one bad outing, a few runs. I don't, it, yeah, he's given up three runs. Like, who cares? I look at the .94 whip for me, and I'm like, okay, he's keeping guys off base. This, because the thing of it is on an ERA, unless you remember exactly how you gave up the runs, another reliever could have allowed those you know in fact i'm gonna i'm gonna say that they did i'm gonna say that i took loisaga out and somebody else allowed those just because it makes me feel better about loisaga okay i'm gonna i'm gonna lie to myself <laughs> no but seriously i think he's gonna get a little boost into silver keep that 50 stamina because he has been doing a lot of uh multi-inning relief appearances and i think it'll continue to be important for them this year because their rotation sucks so bad and uh, it's been really really rough and I hope, SDS, if you are watching, thank you, by the way, um, please improve the control on his pitches because he has a 2.0 walk rate and he was at 2.7 last year. I know he was at four and a half walks the two years before that, um, and that's why his control was low, but he has started to turn the tide on that quite a bit since the start of last year. So hopefully Loisaga gets a little control boost on his pitches as well, make him even more usable for us in BR. Staying in the same division, let's talk about the Rays rookie, Shane McClanahan. Holy smokes, this guy's a beast. Uh, it just I'm not even talking like uh, MLB The Show because you know I have eight innings of whatever pitching with him. I'm talking about real life. He's so fun to watch. He's their next big thing, it seems. Uh, I got him going up to a 75. Uh, just one of the most impressive rookie lefties in the game right now. And obviously, they're going to have to put the reins on him a little bit during the season here so he doesn't get too many innings but i do think that we have enough to get him to silver i would say with somebody like this because of his age and a team like the rays that is definitely going to pull back on him i would not necessarily hold for gold with him we can sell or exchange our silver shares and then reassess as the as the summer progresses just because we don't want to get caught holding the bag if they either like put him in the bullpen or shelve him entirely for like a month at a time or you know for one month period just because they don't want to uh overtax him another rookie who we've gotten the tops now of this year who continues to pitch well and now his his uh live series can match that tops now is james caprillion i got him going up to a silver i don't know exactly how high is that uh, tops now? 79. So it's not co not going to quite match. I just meant in terms of tier, not in terms of number. I'm not saying he's going to go up to 79 right now. But I do have him going up to 75. He just continues to pitch well. You know what's really interesting about him? And this is another thing that's like kind of an intangible thing that uh, you have to be careful with it because it can really blow up on you. But he really seems to uh, figure his way out of jams. There have been so many times I'm watching an A's game with him and he's in trouble and it's like oh boy here we go the floodgates are going to open and he gets out of it and he consistently gets out of it in fact i think he has like a sub 600 ops with runners in scoring position and don't worry about this i'm going somewhere with this uh, i just want to get the exact number here but yeah you don't want to keep putting runners on and trying to wiggle out of it but i i respect the fact that he's able to consistently do that he has a 569 with runners in scoring position, which means that that PCLT there, pitcher clutch, needs to go way up because that's a hell of a number there. 147 batting average, 333 OBP, and 235 slug with runners in scoring position. Caprillion can get a boost there in addition to his other numbers. Now, the one thing I don't know is how much pitching clutch adds or subtracts to the overall so even if they boost it up to say like a 75 or, or maybe more reasonably like a 65 it maybe has to prove it a little bit more before they jump him that high but i don't know how much that's going to help us so that's why i'm not baking that into the upgrade i'm focused more on the skills and that will get him to a 75. you guys remember joe ross i say remember he's not that old but it's been a while since he's been effective he's 27 now he, he uh, is the brother of Tyson Ross, if you remember him. Now that's, a, not, now, that's a do you remember this guy type of guy. But Joe Ross 
uh, was really good when he first got into the league. 20, 2015, 2016, sub four ERAs, um, you know, was looking like kind of, okay, he's going he's gonna to be even better than Big Bro because he's kind of uh, a little bit more refined version of him. Deeper arsenal, this, that, and the other. Then he puts up three straight seasons of a five-something ERA. And it wasn't even seasons. It was 74 innings, 16 innings, 64 innings. And then he opted out last year for COVID. And uh, I don't know. Maybe he just kind of worked on himself, analyzed his game. I don't know what it was, but he's come back with a vengeance, and he's been awesome. Now, he's only got a 402 ERA on the season, but he's been pitching very well of late. He has a 120 whip, which is pretty darn good, too. And if you look at what he's been doing recently, particularly since the last roster update, he has 26 strikeouts, 4 walks, and 17 hits in 20 innings of work. I've got Joe Ross getting the 4 points he needs to go to silver. This is one of my favorites here because I, I, I love this guy. I think he's going to go, I think he's got a good shot to go gold. I don't, I don't want to say I think he's going to go gold like I'm banking, like I'm betting on it. But I think Willie Adamas has a great shot to go gold this summer the way he's hitting with Milwaukee. Uh, I do have him going silver here. So he's getting his three points to get to silver. And I, I think I've talked about this on stream before, maybe even in a roster update. So pardon me if you've heard this or if you saw it on, uh, I think it was on the Chris Rose Rotation podcast where he talked about it with Tower Glass now and Chris Rose. But my man couldn't see at his old home park in Tropicana. Like literally could not see the ball. And he was dreadful at home as a Tampa Bay Ray. And uh, that's not good when half your games are in a certain spot where you are in unable to see the ball properly. Because it is weird. This is crazy. But one of the key factors to su success in baseball is seeing it. I know. It's insane. But since joining Milwaukee, he's at 298, 380, 550 with eight homers. And just to give you a little idea of why finding out about uh, uh, his home struggles, I, I then turned and said, well, He's going to be an all-star. Not this year, obviously, but like he, he's an all-star caliber player. Because on the road for his career, he's a 300, 370, 508 guy with 29 homers and 716 plate appearances. That's basically a season. I mean, that's a little higher of a plate appearance total for most players in a season unless you bat lead off on a good team. But that's ostensibly a season. That's an all-star season right there. So uh, he's already got quality defense too. Willie Adamas is an all-star now that he's in Milwaukee, and I bet he makes the all-star game within one of the next two years. I'm, I'm putting it on, on video. 2022 or 2023, Willie Adamas all-star. And I, I like his chances to go gold this year the way he's hitting with Milwaukee. But I do have him going up to a 75 here. Let's move out to another rookie, this, uh, another rookie starter, I should say, out here on the Blue Jays. Remember when Alec Manoa... Uh, had that first beastly start in Yankee Stadium. Do we take a little credit away from that now that we learned that that team is garbage? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love tweaking Yankee fans. It's so easy. They're so sensitive. Um, no, I don't care what's going on with the Yanks. You go into Yankee Stadium as a rookie and you drop six scoreless with two, uh, two hit innings. Uh, that's incredible. That's incredible. Then Miami hit him a little bit uh, in his next start, and I was like, oh, what was that all about? Hey, man, this is how it goes sometimes. You beast out against the team that probably should have beaten you up, and then you get knocked around for three homers by a team that you should be taking care of. Uh, of course, that was in um, Dunedin, I believe. I'm checking. Yeah, it was in Dunedin, which is a minor league stadium, so every team gets kind of super powered there. But since then, he has popped off again, and only Baltimore in Baltimore has gotten him, which is not, there's no shame in giving up four homers in Camden in the summer. Like, seriously. But that's the only bad outing he's had since that Miami start. 230 ERA with 31 strikeouts in 27 and a third innings, and a sub one whip, 0.96. And the whip and the strikeouts are what we care about. We don't care as much about that ERA as I've reiterated here. Just because the only reason I'm reiterating that, kind of pounding that drum there, is when people say so-and-so deserves an upgrade because his ERA is this. Those two things do not link, okay? Unless he has the skills to back such a good ERA, it does not matter. 
conversely, somebody with like a 475 ERA could have excellent skills that deserve an upgrade. And that happens sometimes. I think Alex Cobb is kind of an example of that guy this year. You look at his ERA and it's kind of dog trash. It's a 460 this year, but he has 10.2 strikeouts, 2.7 walks. So he needed some upgrades in those. But anyway, enough of that diatribe. You guys get it. Uh, don't cite ERA as a reason somebody will get upgraded. I got Manoa going up to a 76, by the way, and he's very affordable right now. Next up is a guy who has fallen all the way down to bronze, and yet I believe he's going to build back up to gold, and that is Luis Castillo. If you've been following his trajectory this year, you know that it was rough pretty much from the jump. He had a cup, like a sprinkling of a good start here and there um, in the midst of that dead run, but it was brutal for the most part. Well, he's turned the corner and he's back, baby. I got him going up to a 76, maybe even a 77, to be honest. It's going to be two, three points, whatever it is. Either way, he's getting back to silver and setting up that, that return to gold. Now, you look at his season numbers still, and you're going to be like, 146 whip, 506 ERA, 508 ERA. Are you sure, Paul? I'm sure, okay? Since June 1st, 213 ERA with a... 0.76 whip. The whip is way more impressive than the ERA, to be honest. He's just not putting base runners on right now. And a lot of that has been cut, has been the fact that he's been like super difficult to hit. 5.7 hits per nine in that span. That's fantastic. Over 38 innings, 3.6 walks, which is fine. Um, but the strikeouts are there as well. Strikeout per inning. He needs, a, he needs a good boost right now to get back into silver. And then if he keeps pitching like this, he will go back to gold. So you better believe that I'm going to hang on to some of my Luis Castillos after this silver upgrade because I do believe he has a great shot to go gold. Speaking of resurrections, we talked about that with Joe Ross. Caleb Smith back. Um, you know, he did a few things with the Marlins a couple years ago, but injuries have consistently gotten in his way. Same for Joe Ross, by the way. I, I didn't get him off the hook enough for, for some of his struggles there. I, I kind of acted like it was all on him. A lot of it was injury, too, which is something his brother dealt with a lot. But anyway, uh, yeah, Caleb Smith has had injury issues. Uh, he's had a couple good seasons where you can kind of see something coming through, but it was never really put together. Might be put together here. He started in the bullpen for the Diamondbacks, but he's had to transition into the rotation, and he's been excellent. Um, you see he's got some decent skills here. The big key is that he wasn't walking as many guys for a while. Now, he had a couple bad outings with his walks, but even his last outing, only one walk against a very difficult Giants team. Most importantly, over his last four starts, we're looking at somebody who's got 24 strikeouts in 23 innings and just a 1.13 whip. That hit nine is at 79, but I think it can go even higher because you look at what he's done in those four starts. That's a 5.5 hit nine for the season. It's at a very nice 6.9. So I don't have a massive upgrade for him. I've only got two points right now, but the way he's pitching has been pretty nice. Now I will say when he goes silver, I'm going to sell all mine and, and wait. He's, he's too volatile and has had too many injury issues for me to hold any of the shares, but I will continue to keep him on my watch list in case he continues to pitch like this and becomes a gold candidate. So unlike Castillo, I'm going to unload all my Caleb Smiths after he gets upgraded and then circle back around if I need to. This guy is an all-star this year, which kind of surprised me. I did a double take. I was like, Nathan Eovaldi has been good enough to be an all-star? And uh, it's interesting because I love Eovaldi and I usually get him on so many fantasy teams. I didn't buy this year, y'all. Even though he was pretty decent last year, I've just, I've dealt with a lot of headaches with him. And so I kind of, I kind of took a pass on him. And so I haven't been paying as much attention and clearly I've missed it because uh, like I said, all-star and he was very all-star worthy. He's been excellent this year. And one of the big reasons he's been so good, and again, this does not matter as much for our purposes, but he has the best home run rate in baseball at 0.4. So they do need to up the homer nine. I don't know if that's going to help the overall as much. Um, and maybe we can do a test to see what that does. But he does also need some love on his strikeout and walk rates as well, especially that walk rate. I know it's already at a 79, which is very good, but he's running a sub two walk rate at this point. He's just not walking anybody. In fact... Only one, uh, twice this year has he walked more than two in a game. That's fantastic. And you look at what he's done over his last four starts, two walks. Two walks in 25 innings. 
That's incredible. So that's a 0.7 walks per nine. That's so filthy. Um, now the strikeouts, the one thing about uh, Nathan Eovaldi and Red Sox fans, he, he probably learned this last year because uh, he was on the team last year and 19 actually, I forgot. He was instrumental in the All Star in the uh, World Series run. But one thing that they've probably grown accustomed to is like, he doesn't have as many strikeouts as his stuff would make you believe that he could be capable of, right? Like he had a good 9.7 rate last year and even the 9.3 in 2019 was pretty good. But when you watch Nathan Eovaldi, you think he's somebody who should be like in that double digit range easily. You know, we're talking like, based on, listen, look, you see it right here, 97 mile an hour fastball, 91 mile an hour cutter, 80 mile an hour uh, curve, and then the splitty at 87. You're like, this guy could have one of the best strikeout rates in the league but he just doesn't. And part of it is that is sequencing. And part of it is that none of those are just true swing and miss devastators, but that's all right. That's okay for Nathan Eovaldi because we're going to get two points here, get him up to a 78, set him up for a potential gold. But I will say that gold isn't coming unless he, he, he jumps those strikeouts or becomes like a premium hit suppressor. But Usually when you have this good of a walk rate, it's because you're in the zone a lot and you become a little bit more hittable because you're relying on contact to, to kind of get your out. So I think this is probably where the train ends for him at, at like a 78, 79. I don't think he's necessarily going to get to gold, but I do love the season he's having. Like I said, I'm a longtime fan of his dating back to his days with the Dodgers. Um, I just don't think that gold's in the cards for him. Gold could be in the cards for this guy if he if he keeps cooking, because Josh Bell is is getting back on track, and you know, they just, they were just dealt a devastating blow with somebody who we're going to talk about in, in a little bit here, but this team has surged. They are now 41 and 42 in second place, and they were left for dead earlier. And I don't blame anybody who did that. I was among them. I I love them coming into the year. I thought they could challenge the the Braves and Mets for the top. And then they got off to the, just a wretched start. And I know because they did the 19 and 31 thing that everyone's like, never give up on the Nats. That's a totally different team. And that's like a once in a lifetime kind of scenario. Like you can't use that as a reason to not give up on a team. The fact is they went 11 and 17 in May. And for all intents and purposes, especially given that division, because they have, you know, multiple contenders. So for all intents and purposes, you could have given up on them. They were 21 and 29 and it would have been fine. Well, they said not so fast, my friend, and they promptly put up a 19 and nine um, June, and they've carried, uh, they have not carried it over into July. They're one and four in July, so this team's not that great. But Josh Bell, Josh Bell, I'm out here talking about the team so much. Josh Bell has been fantastic, and he's definitely regained his status a bit after just an awful 2020, and really a terrible start to this year. So people were really questioning, you know, should I even have Josh Bell on my fantasy team? Like what's going on with this guy? And I totally understood it, but here he is out here doing his thing. Now, the one thing I don't love about this card and the reason that I don't have him going gold right now, or even being a major hold for gold candidate is he's still not hitting against lefties. He has a little bit of power because he has three homers and two doubles in his nine hits, but he only has nine hits in 52 at bats, which means he has a 173 batting average. So you see that 37 contact, it's not going anywhere. The power versus lefty might go up a little bit, but the bulk of this gain is going to be against righties. And I think it's going to get him up to a seven. 78 for for now and until he shows any signs of life against lefties he's probably going to remain a 78 79 and and not really threaten gold this guy can threaten gold except he plays in the stupidest park in the universe and that's herman marquez and we just heard today that they're not going to trade him i didn't really think they would um it's this it's this weird you know kind of uh damned if you do damned if you don't kind of thing right no pitcher really wants to sign with Colorado. You know, Mike Hampton did that whole thing about the school system or whatever. It's because they gave him the bag. They said, you know what, what, what's the number, right? You fill in the blank check. We want you here. Um, because it's so hard to get pitchers to go out there uh, because of how crazy that park is. So when they actually grow somebody who's truly a badass pitcher and the only thing that makes Marquez, you know, tough to roster in fantasy or anything is that stadium, they're, it's gonna, they're gonna be hard pressed to get rid of a guy like that. On the other hand, if they traded him, they could get such a mint. They could ask for so much because he's also on a remarkably team-friendly deal. So 
it's the push pull. And frankly, I don't envy the Rockies trying to figure out what they're doing there. But he had a good season last year and survived Coors. He's surviving Coors this year. Uh, he has a 359 ERA and a 118 whip. That whip is particularly impressive because the one thing that, you know, no matter how good of a strikeout guy you are, hits are usually going to fall in Coors, sometimes not even due to your own fault, just because it's such a spacious outfield. And in the recent years, they haven't had the best outfield defense. You know, Charlie Blackman's still out there. He's not a great defender. Uh, they do have Rymel Toppy and Garrett Hampson, a couple of speedy guys. So maybe they're chasing th things down, and that's why Marquez has a 7.1 hits nine, which is very good. So I got him for a nice, healthy update, getting up to a 78. Um, I think he, I think he does have a shot at gold. What we have to avoid is the Coors blow up. And that's the scary part about investing in him for gold is that it will take just one night of Coors being Coors and then it's out the window, you know? So that's the one thing that worries me about that, but he does deserve to get boosted. He's also, a, I believe he's an all-star, right? Uh, so congratulations to him. All right, now I got a few 79s for you. So these guys are absolutely knocking on the door. And if I'm wrong by a little bit, then they're going this week too. We'll start with Diego Castillo. Now, was it last year or two years ago or both where he and Jose Alvarado would threaten to go gold like once a month, both of them or one of them at a time? Like they, they were just back and forth. Honestly, it's probably been throughout Diego's career because he's always been good, but it seems whenever he gets up to the, to the finish line, to the goal line of putting it in the end zone to be gold, he fumbles. Hopefully that doesn't happen this time. He's running a career high strikeout rate at 12.5, a career low walk rate at 2.6. His hits per nine is a little up at 7.3 from his normal, but 7.3 is still fine. So I'm not, I'm not shading him for that. Um, it's just a little higher than normal. However, He's allowed just one hit with five strikeouts since the last roster update. Now, that's only three and two-thirds because relievers just don't pitch that much in a two-week period. But he's been excellent, and Diego Castillo is absolutely a hold for gold and very affordable. Next up, also an all-star, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, chat. But um, you say Kikuchi? Did he make it? I, I think he did. Yusei Kikuchi is having a very fine season. He's been a little bit of a tease the last couple of years. He'll come into spring training, like throwing 98, debuting a new pitch. And we're like, okay, here we go. This is the year. Now, listen, it hasn't been that many times because he's only been in the league for three years. So I guess it's been three straight spring trainings. And I was a little nervous about falling for it again this year. I was like, okay, guys, we've seen this for two spring trainings. Look, are we going to get the results? Oh, we're getting the results. Um, he's excellent. He's been having a wonderful season this year and really coming into his own. I mean, he's 30 years old coming over from Japan a couple years ago. So, you know, he is a, a fully formed pitcher in terms of like veteran status and everything, but he's finding his footing in a brand new league and it's taken him a little bit. And he really only has like one plus seasons. It's not like he has two seasons. He had 32 starts in 2019, but then nine last year. What That's nothing. And then 15 so far this year. So, you know, you give him a little, little, little bit of leeway to figure it out. And here he is. He's figuring it out. You look at what he's done over his last four starts, only two of which have been since the last update. But just to show you the kind of excellent period that he's in, he has 24 strikeouts in 26 and two thirds. He's not a huge strikeout guy, but I think we can start getting that into the 60s. Just 14 hits in 26 and two thirds. That's incredible, y'all. That's going to be a 4.7 hits per nine. Like, that's that's just unreal. And then 11 walks in that same time, which is a 3.7 mark, which is okay. Um, but that shows how nasty he is. Uh, and when you're nasty like that, sometimes you got a little bit, it's a little difficult to command your stuff, so you throw a few walks. Big deal if you get out of it. And he's been getting out of it. So I got him going up to a 79, and he is indeed a hold for gold candidate. Now, this next guy could get gold this time. I just don't know. It's one of those where, you know how like when you check um, Inside Edge, it's Kyle Gibson, by the way. I'm not, I'm not going to scroll down or anything and trick y'all. It's, it's Gibson. You know how like when you check Inside Edge and somebody gets plus two in, uh, in hit nine and K9 for the day, but they go up two overall points or something? Sometimes it's like so weird where the smallest upgrade kind of puts them over. Um, if he is that close to where a little bit of love 
on his uh, hit nine, a good bit of love on his walk rate, and a, and a smidgel of love on his K9 can get him four points, then maybe he gets there next this week. But I'm still going to be cautious and call it a 79 with a little hold for gold love. He's an all-star. He's pitching very well. If we could just get a few more strikeouts from Kyle Gibson, he'd already be gold, in my opinion. Because that's the thing that's really holding him back. He has just a 7.6 mark. And in today's game, 7.6 is really bad. But obviously you do not need strikeouts to succeed. Like he's showing that I can succeed with command and control. However, 17 strikeouts since the last roster update in 12 and two thirds innings, which is fantastic. Sub one whip thanks to seven hits in 12 and two thirds. So listen, one thing I'm going to say is because it's it's not as ripe of a uh, uh, as ripe of an update as it was last time that maybe they work a little harder to get a couple of these guys up to that last little bit. Maybe they push Kyle Gibson just a little bit. Maybe give him like if they were going to put 55 on the K9, maybe they go up to 60 instead cuz like that doesn't fundamentally alter the card, but if that's enough to move him from 79 to 80, then it's worth it, especially because he's an all-star and he's been pitching excellently all year. So, again, get invested in him now if you if you believe in this at all, get in now because if you wait until Friday, I might be wrong to the negative by one point and he automatically and he does go gold and then you're out. You know, so get in. If you believe in this, get in while the getting's still pretty good. Next up, this one, Chambers, if you're watching, not yet. Not yet. But it's close. I got him going up to 70. I got Ian Anderson going up to a 79 right now. He's chugging along, okay? I know a large portion of the community has invested in Ian Anderson. I believe he's pitching tonight. Let's get a live update. Does he have 42 strikeouts of the Pirates tonight? Four and five innings. Chad Cool had more. Seven and six innings. Okay. It's all right. I'm good. I'm good. This is why I have him at a 79, y'all. The strikeouts just aren't there right now. But he is a damn fine pitcher. Um, he's a little bit Kyle Gibson-y right now with the way his... Uh, I mean, he's got more strikeouts than Gibson. But uh, he also doesn't have quite as good of a walk rate as Gibson. So, um, But yeah, I think he's going to get two points up to a 79. And basically, they're going to say, hey, what what can you do for us to, to show us that you deserve gold over the next couple of weeks? So if you have Ian Anderson, stay invested but uh, it, I don't think it's happening this week because I don't even think that they can really finagle him the way they couldn't with like that way they can with like a Kyle Gibson type. You know what I'm saying? Next up is another starter, and he's another one like that I think could be pushed over the line this week because it's an otherwise light update. I have him just for one point right now. This is one of those where, and and this is part of why this is both art and science. We can look at the numbers all we want and say, this is what he's doing since the last roster update. But sometimes there's a little bit of massaging on things where it's like, you know what? We need to catch up on him for the entire season. So let's do this. And we've seen that with a few cards this year. And if I were better prepared at this, I would have examples. Because <laughs> I remember there were a couple guys I asked SDS about. I said, hey, since the last update, this guy wasn't that good. Was this a catch up for the whole season or am I missing something? And they said, no, nah, no, nah. we knew that we were a little bit light on him previously. So we this was kind of a make good. This could be a make good week for Molly. And they give him the two points to gold because he has 11.3 strikeouts, 3.1 walks and 7.5 hit nine for the year. Those are all excellent. The K-9 is getting boosted regardless, but I don't know if it's going to be enough for the two points. That's kind of the question mark. I think the walk rate at 3.1 could get a little bit of love into the 60s as well. The only problem was his last start, he walked four. Thanks for nothing, Tyler Molly. Uh, thanks for the seven strikeouts in five innings. But either way, he's still one of my biggest hold for golds. I'm not going anywhere, even if he does get 79 this week. Uh, the pack sale made him extremely affordable and if you don't think i'm super into him you can see right there i got 116 of him he's one of my most uh most invested in players i'm, I'm in for the long haul on him maybe it comes through this week but even if it doesn't i'm not going anywhere 
Now here's a 79 and a half, and let me explain to you on the halves. I I, I like them, and and they have a great shot to go. I'm just not a hundred percent sure that I that I want to say like, oh, it's a lock. Now the problem, the thing of it is, it doesn't matter because the market's already there on Hunter Renfro, because I guess they believe. Oh, actually, you know what? No, I'm changing. This is what I'm talking about. You see the inside edge says plus one. Plus, no, automatic. He's an 80. I'm, I'm not waffling anymore. That's all I needed to see. I, I This was not available to me when I did the update yesterday. Now that I see this, it's a lock. Stone cold lock. But of course, the market's already there. So the way, the way to invest in this is to do the back orders. And what I mean by that is you go in, you place a bunch of orders at say like 350. And then when he goes gold, those orders get sold, 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 sold all the way down to your 350 and you get a bunch of orders fulfilled at 350. You have to be super patient, but it does happen. It works. It's a known thing in the community. Do it because you're too late now on him, but you can get in on that still. He is going to go gold. All right. Now here's a guy I hinted at earlier, which you guys are smart. You knew who I was talking about when I was talking about Josh Bell and I said we'd get back to somebody else. It is Kyle Schwarber. Now, he needs four points. So you're like, well, how the heck is he going to get that? Um, this is one of the guys I think will get massaged if needed, but I don't even know that they need to, and I'll tell you why. Let me get my... I, I made some notes on the guys going gold. Um, so since the last update, he's decimating righties with a 320, 433, 1040 OPS and six homers. But... He's also hitting lefties since the last roster update. You might have heard some of the some of the community chatter on the uh, on Twitter about player of the month cards and why he won't get lightning because he didn't hit lefties well enough. And that is true. For the month, he did not hit lefties very well. He had one home run against uh, Rich Hill to kind of give him a lone homer against lefties. But since the last roster update, which is only a two week period, he's hitting 364, 462, 727 with that Rich Hill homer. So I don't even think they have to really massage it, but the reason I think that he's gonna get there too and, and, and they would massage it if they had to is because he just had a devastating hamstring injury that's gonna put him on the shelf for a while. And let's be honest, our lasting memory of Kyle Schwarber should be as a gold. My man has 25 homers in 303 plate appearances. That's a gold. He's been, uh, excuse me, he's been playing like an uber diamond for the month of June, so he deserves some love. Next up is uh, lock, lock, lock uh, here. And I think the market's already there, but let's just take a look at one Ryan Presley. Yeah, you, you pretty much don't. I mean, it's a lock, but I still think here's this is this is a good example of where the back ordering thing is better than just taking your guaranteed 200 stubs, because if I put in a bunch of orders for 400 or 300 or whatever, however low you want to go, you know, um, de de that depends how long you have to be patient, though, too. Um, I think that's a better maneuver here than going with the 800 because he's definitely going right like 1.8 hits. 18 strikeouts per nine and zero walks in five innings since the last update. Frankly, I still don't even know why he lost gold. I, that one was perplexing when it happened. So he's going to go back to gold. Now, the one caveat as far as doing the back order trick with him is he might now be on the diamond train. You know, if you look, Ryan Presley reminds me a lot of another one of my favorite diamond candidates who... If you've been with me all year, you got in on Giovanni Gallegos very cheap, and now he's pretty expensive. Um, but Presley is that same kind of guy. Like, what isn't he doing well uh, over the last three years that would kind of put him, you know, into the high gold, knocking on the door of Diamond Realm, especially this year, because he's cut his walk rate big time this year, and his hit rate is back down after spiking in 2020 to 9.0. It's down to 6.2 this year. So... I would actually recommend against doing the back order thing with Ryan Presley. And I'll just say, if you didn't get in, you missed the boat. What you can do, if you want, is you could buy now at 800 and hold for diamond. And then the worst case is you get your, your guaranteed 200 stubs if he doesn't go diamond and you quick sell for gold. Actually, he'll probably end up at least at like 83, if not 84 this year, which means he'd be higher than the, the base gold of a, of a thousand. So 
Either way, he actually is an investment. I've kind of talked myself through the whole trajectory here. Uh, so don't do the back order thing. If you're going to invest in him, invest in him for the more longer term. And uh, let's see if we can get Ryan Presley to diamond this year. Because even if not, you know, what do they say? Shoot, sh shoot for the moon. If not, you land amongst the stars or some stupid shit like that. Basically, we're shooting for diamond. And if not, he's probably going to be an 83, 84, which will make him like a 2,500 to 3,500 stub card anyway. And then you're still making hella profit. Bam, you're welcome. I'm a genius. I, I fell, my, fell my way ass backwards into that one, let's be honest. Another lock for me is Rysel Iglesias. He's more affordable than Ryan Presley right now. You know, we talked about him several weeks ago when it looked like he was going to go. Actually, I've had him. I think this is my 42nd update in a row where I've had Rysel Iglesias. <laughs> Did I have him last? Yeah, I had him last update and the update before. So maybe I'm just going to predict him until he gets it. And I'll be like, ha! Told y'all. <laughs> They're like, Paul, you've been saying it for six years. Shut the hell up. No, but honestly... Um, you know, he came up short a couple times there. I really think he's got a great shot here. I'd, I'd actually be floored if he didn't get it. Because if you look, his first outing since the, uh, in this new update period was a two inning, uh, two innings of perfect work with five strikeouts. And that just jump started what's been a great run for him. Since the last roster update, he has nine innings with one hit and that's it. It happened to be a home run, so he has one run, but who cares? One hit, zero walks, 15 punches. If he doesn't go this time, then I guess he's just not going. Like, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. He's a lock. All right, let's move over to a starter who I like to go up, and that is Tony Disco. Anthony Desclafani, he's a 78. I think he gets his two points. I'm not even sure it's going to be that hard. He's been one of the best breakouts this year. I think he gets some jumps across the board. 7.2 hit nine, 8.6 Ks, and 2.6 walk rates since the last update. That walk rate's definitely going up. That could do it alone, but I think a little bit of love to the strikeout rate and maybe even a little bit more on the hit nine because I think his season hit nine is quite good. Let me take a look at that. His season hit nine is 6.7. So I think that could even go up a little bit more. But the walk rate deserves big love, and that alone should get him to gold. But uh, if not, I think getting the strikeout rate into the low 60s will do the trick. So I really like Tony Disco to get there. And then my man's, he's back, Joseph. Joey Votto, man, he's out here hitting for a bunch of power, just tearing the cover off the ball, and I like to see it, man. Uh, I've been a Joey Votto fan his entire career. It was really starting to look like we were kind of hitting that uh, Miguel Cabrera tra trajectory of his career. And uh, he said, no, I got I got one last kick here. And he's really turned up the power, especially since coming back from injury. If we look at that period first, since coming back from injury on June 8th, he has 103 plate appearances of a 300, 388, 533 line with six homers. In uh, I said 103 plate appearances. That's a 38 homer pace over a full season. So he's been amazing uh, since coming back from injury. If you look just since the last roster update, which is the most pertinent to us right now, 333, 391, 619. Uh, that's a 1010 OPS with three homers in 46 plate appearances. That's a 41 homer pace. So we're going to see some big power boosts here uh, for Votto. Let me see how he's doing against lefties on the season. Not so well, so that's not necessarily going to get the love, but the, I think there's two points worth of boosts against righties for him, plus a little love to his power against lefties because he does have a little bit of power going there. Now a few gold-to-gold -gold moves that's going to set up some of our next diamonds. Well, I shouldn't say that because this first guy I don't think is going to go diamond. He is a quintessential high gold. He can have diamond moments, but over the course of a full season, we do not see Joey Gallo as a full diamond because he just doesn't have the contact rate, okay? But I do see him getting a two-point boost here to get to 83, and then everyone is going to be excited thinking that he's going to go diamond, and then I'm going to have to remind them that he just does not have the contact ability to get to diamond. They can make diamond cards for him, and those are awesome, and I love that, but his live series card just... It just can't. I just don't see it right now. But I do think he's going to get a few points up to an 83. This guy, man, has come out of nowhere. People left him for dead after a disastrous 2020 with Brian Reynolds. And like, hey, man, we gave so many guys a pass on their 2020. 
But it's just like, he's a pirate, so fuck him. Like, I don't understand why Brian Reynolds didn't get any benefit of the doubt for last year when he was so good in 2019. I, you know what? I know what, he's, I know what it is. It's because people didn't believe in the 2019. They thought that was fraudulent because anybody that, that is a high contact, batting average, you know, guy who runs a high BABIP, we, we are trained in the statistical era to not believe in him. And I understand being skeptical of a high BABIP. That's smart because BABIPs regress. It went from 387, which is unsustainable. You're not going to keep putting that up every single year. But it went down to 231 last year. Okay, that was never ever 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 going to stay he got you know he had a shitty two months that's all there is to it he's come back with an absolute vengeance though the bad is back up to 360 and he's tearing the cover off the ball he's shown more power than he did in that breakout campaign he has 15 homers in 337 plate appearances he had 16 homers in all of 2019 which was 546 plate appearances so brian reynolds is going up big i got him going up Two points up to an 83. And listen, the way he's hitting, um, I'm not going to rule out Diamond here. He's going to get big power love. And don't be surprised if that contact against righty starts to move up too because he's hitting 288 against them. So Brian Reynolds is a Diamond candidate and he's base price right now. So keep that in mind. Oh, see, this is what I'm talking about. When those five 1000s uh, are done selling, these 500 orders are going to go through. So somebody's going to get him on a back order at 500, and then they can quick sell those and get 500 free stubs, basically. So it's a, just a sneaky way to invest. Anyway, that's Brian Reynolds. Moving on. Now this now we get to a couple guys who are basically 84 and a half. I didn't put this guy as an 84 and a half on the sheet, but he's, he's right there. I put him as an 84. Trent Grisham. It's basically, can they, you know, is it there? He's surging versus lefties, but it's only eight plate appearances. So it's hard to say surging. That's really not the right. That's what I put in my notes. I'm like, you can't say that for eight plate appearances. He has done well in those eight plate appearances, but it's eight plate appearances. He's going to get some love against righties. He's going to go to an 84. Um, the question is, though, like we just saw with the Hunter Renfro, if a small upgrade gives him two points, I can't necessarily know that without, you know, seeing that, that that's what it is. So I'm going with an 84. I'm being conservative and being smart. But if you want in now, an 83 almost never, an 83 with real diamond potential never costs this much. You need to leverage the pack sale and go get in on this guy because he does have diamond upside. This guy did get an 84 and a half on the sheet. And I'm going to, I'm going to explain right now why he definitely still has a great shot to go now listen the market's already here on freddie peralta so this is really just for posterity's sake because you don't need to be investing in him right now anyway i did put him as an 84 and a half because if you go off of the last roster update you know the, the period since the last roster update he doesn't deserve it plain and simple he doesn't um he has he has a uh 6.8 walks per nine since the last update that's horrible and that's the biggest issue that he has however channel my my inner Stephen a there if you if they wanted to do like a catch-up scenario like i was talking about earlier where they say you know what let's analyze this more holistically as opposed to just zooming in on the last two weeks then they might be able to get him there because they could see okay you know, over the last like two months, he has a 3.7 walk rate, which is a little bit better. And his hit nine for the season is 4.1, which could go even higher than the 103 that he has here. Same with his strikeout rate. So it's one of those, if they decide to go with a more uh, uh, whole season look, he's going to get there. If they just go off the last update, then he's not getting there. So I don't know. But again, it truly doesn't matter because the market's already there anyway. So if you weren't in on Freddie Peralta already, don't worry about it. But if he doesn't go, buy the dip. Buy the dip because people will will panic sell their faces off. And then to wrap up, I got two diamonds for you. I don't know how investable they are, so let's take a quick look. First is Barnes, Matt Barnes. I got Matt Barnes going, okay? I know the community is a little split right now. I got him going. Partly because it's a light update, and I think that they'll they'll 
you know, they want to have some diamonds, and I think he's he's definitely one of the best candidates recently. We've been kind of waiting with bated breath every time he comes in, hoping that something bad doesn't happen. But again, if they take the more holistic approach, he has a 2.4 walks per nine on the year, and 62 is not representative of that. But even if you look at since the last roster update, he's been good. He's been good. He gave up, didn't he give up like a homer? I think that's it. He gave up one homer. So yeah, you look since the last roster update, he gave up an unearned run and a homer. Otherwise, he has nine strikeouts and six and two thirds along with two walks. Now the two walks gives him a 2.7 walks per nine. That's that's good. So I think that walk rate can go into the low 70s and it can't, he can't need much more than that to go diamond. So I think Barnsey goes and those of you who've been just cashing in left and right on the stub sale, I think, uh, I think another content creator put out their roster update to send this uh soaring up because he was tracking so cheaply for a few days there due to the pack sale and you never see 84s that cheap so if you didn't get in on some of those cheap barnses i gotta say unless you were out you know celebrating the fourth or, or busy doing work or family stuff and you can't be on your game the whole time i get it but if you were on your game and you're an investor and you didn't get in when he was that cheap come on what are you doing and then this one's the obvious one. I think everybody has this, but I will I will add on to the Albies love. He's going. Do I need to say anything? Like he's going. Okay. That, like, I'm not gonna waste y'all's time and, and expound on that, especially because the market's already there. Ozzy Albies will be a diamond, and that's all there is to it. So there you go. There's 42 names. Uh, I have 82 in all. If you subscribe to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash spore, you get the full list. Uh, like I said, I think this week is really set up. For micro, micro investors, folks who have smaller bankrolls who, who want to uh, get more bang for their buck, and team affinity folks who like to do the exchanges but want to do them on the cheap. This is a great opportunity because it coincides with the pack sale and it really has created some insane buying chances. So make sure you're getting in on some of those cheap guys. Happy investing. Good luck. And we'll see you on Friday to do the roster review. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.